today's lesson, we're going to take a look at finding common factors and then the greatest common factor. Uh, there's a couple different methods we can use uh, to find the common factors as well as the greatest common factor. So we'll take a look at those. But before we start, we want to hit on a few vocabulary terms here. Uh, the first vocabulary term would be common factors. So these are factors that are shared by two or more numbers. Uh, you remember in the last lesson we talked about a factor is a number that you multiply times uh, another factor to get a certain number. So if I'm looking for uh, factors of 10, 2 and 5 are factors of 10 because I multiply them together to get 10. Uh, in common factors, we're looking for if there's two numbers or more numbers that share certain factors. So I used, we'll use 2, like I was saying, 2 times 5 is 10, for example, and I know that 2 times 2 is 4. So 2 is a common factor of both 4 and 10 because we can use that number in both those cases to get either 4 or 10. But not only are we looking for common factors, but the biggest thing we're looking for is we're looking for greatest common factor. And that is the largest factor that two or more numbers share. So we'll kind of look at two different methods on how to, how to find those factors and then how to determine what the greatest common factor is. Um, as always, I'm going to show you a couple different ways. I'd like you to try doing them a couple different ways. But when it all comes down to it, as long as you get the answer in the end, I'm happy with it. So it's not a, you don't have to do it one way or the other. Whichever one makes you more comfortable, whichever one you feel like you do a better job with, that's what you should do. So let's take a look at how we can find greatest common factor. My first example, I'd like to find the greatest common factor of 36 and 48 by listing the factors. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to actually go through and we're going to list all the factors of 36. Now the easiest way to do this is just always start off with the exact same number and every single factor list is going to start the exact same. It's going to start with 1 because no matter what I can always take and multiply 1 times that number to get that number. So in this case 1 times 36 is always going to give me 36. Now you notice I spread them apart. That's because I'm going to fill these in as I go, and I'm going to utilize my divisibility rules that we've worked on to help me determine what some of the factors are. For example, I know that 2 is a factor of 36 because it's an even number. Now, if basically I'm saying what times 2 is 36, or what is half of 36 in this case. Okay, so if I'm doing that, I'm going to say that it is 18. 2 times 18 gives me 36. I look in 3 works because 3 plus 6 is 9. 9 is divisible by 3, so I know 3 is a factor. What would I multiply times 3 to get 36? And that number is 12. Uh, 4? Does 4 work? Well, I know that 4 times 9 is 36. And then 5 doesn't work because it doesn't end in a 0 or 5. But I lastly know that 6 times 6 is 36. So there's my list of factors of 36. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, 36. I'm going to do the exact same thing now with 48. I'm going to start with 1 and 48. 2 works because it's an even number. So 2 times 24. 3, 8 plus 4 is 12, so that definitely works. 3. Now, some of you might say to yourself, man, I'm really not sure. I know that it's multiplied by 3. You can actually write the division problem out if you need to. Okay? But in this case, it's 16. 16 times 3. Because 6 times 3 is 18. You move the 1 up. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 more is 4. That gives me my 48. Does 4 work? Well, it sure does. Because 4 times 12. 5 doesn't work because it doesn't end in 0 or 5. 6 works. 6 times 8 is 48. And there we've got our factor list. Now, we are looking for the greatest common factor. You're probably looking at these lists and saying, wow, they share a lot in common. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12. They share a lot of different numbers. But we are looking for the greatest common factor. Not just common factors, the greatest common factor. And as you see, the greatest common factor of these two numbers is 12. Pretty simple, right? All I got to do is circle them, or I can write it off to the side if I want to. I could also just write 12 and circle it off the side. But that's how you do it. That's how you find the greatest common factor with a list. Let's look at another example here. I've got 16 and 56. All right, so I'm going to start the same way. 1 and 16. 2. Let's see, 8 times 2 is 16. 3 doesn't work because 6 plus 1 is 7. That's not divisible by 3. 4 works because it's 4 times 4 is 16. Those are all my factors. Now, 
if your paper is like mine where it's got a big gap in the middle because you didn't fill in that entire space, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. It'll all work out in the end. If you want to rewrite it so they're all nice and neat together, that's fine. But it, you won't get counted off for it. Let's do 56. So we're going to start with 1 and 56. Okay. Now I'm looking at this and I know that it's divisible by 2. So I, I got to think about this. What what times 2 would be 56? Or what's what's uh, half of 56? How would I What would I take times 2 to get 56? So in this case, I'm thinking about it. And if you need to, like I said earlier, go off to the side. And actually do the division problem because then you're going to find out that once you get all the division done you find out that it's actually 18 or I'm sorry 28 so there you go so you have that figured out okay never ever worry about writing the problems off to the side because it's always better to do that than to just take a guess well three work three is not going to work because five plus six is eleven that's not divisible by three does four work can we cut that 28 in half again? And we sure can. We can cut that 28 in half and make that uh, 14. Uh, 5 isn't going to work because it ends in a 6, not a 5 or a 0. Does 6 work? Let's see here. 6 times 10 is 60. 6 times 9 is 54. That's not going to work for us. To 7. And you'll find out 7 works because 7 times 8 is 56. So there we've got all of our factors of 56 as well as all of our factors of 16. Again, there's many common factors in this case, 1, 2, 4, and 8. But we're looking for the greatest common factor. And the greatest common factor of these two numbers is 8. So 8's the greatest common factor. Pretty simple. You go ahead and give it a shot. Pause the video, find the, make the list of 20 and 25, determine what the greatest common factor is, hit play, and check your answer. All right, let's see how this went for you. We're going to do 20. We're going to look at 20 and 25. Hopefully, you start off with the most obvious and the easiest. 1 and 20. Okay. From there, 2 times 10 is 20. 3 does not work. 4 will work. 4 times 5, and that's our list. Again, I hope you start with the easiest one for this one here, for, for 25, 1 and 25. 2 doesn't work because it's even. 3 doesn't work because 5 plus 2 is 7. 4 doesn't work because if it's not divisible by 2, it's not going to be divisible by 4. 5 will work, though, because 5 times 5 is 25. 6 doesn't work, 7 doesn't, 8, 9, and so on. And you'll notice then that, boy, there's only a few factors for 25. What is the greatest common factor? What's the biggest number that those two lists share? That's 5. So that's one way to find the greatest common factor, and that's by listing out the factors 